Hi, I'm Eric Peterson, Chair of Scientific Sessions, and I'm here with Donna Lloyd-Jones, my co-chair. Don, welcome. Thanks, Eric. And we're here to do the wrap-up of the 2017 AHA Scientific Sessions. Don, this was an amazing meeting. I mean, if there was just one word for it, I would say just outstanding, maybe two words, outstanding <laughs> science. Um, every room I seemed to go to was crowded and full of people and full of energy. How about yourself? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, uh, I, I think the energy in the, in the technology hall at the poster sessions and in all of the oral sessions was really uh, over and above what we've seen lately. And, and so I think uh, we, we really have seen a renaissance of this meeting this year, which was very exciting to see. I want to actually take this opportunity to thank you for your leadership and also thank the incredible AHA staff who make this kind of meeting possible. Well, I'd say it's actually the team. As you've already mentioned, um, it's a lot of people that work very, very hard to get this meeting together. I also liked your word, the Renaissance. A little bit, we hadn't been to Anaheim since 2000, you know, 9 11, actually. Right. And a lot of people are talking about how we're getting back more to the basics the idea of just great science being presented by great speakers, and then the opportunity to share it amongst a large crowd of people. That was really wonderful. Yeah, I think the networking opportunities that come in a meeting like this are really unparalleled. And I've uh, tried to take advantage of as much of that as possible. And I've, I've certainly seen the spaces where networking can happen uh, are much more user friendly. And so I think that's a, an important aspect of these meetings. Well, it's hard to sort of highlight just a few highlights from these wonderful meetings. Um, I think the hypertension guidelines has to be one of them. What do you think? Yeah, I think that was the, the big deal uh, at this meeting for sure. We've been waiting for uh, consensus broad-based hypertension guidelines really since JNC7 in 2003, and boy, did we get them. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there have been a number of paradigm shifts in the new hypertension guidelines that were presented here. Just to highlight a couple of those things, um, importantly, a redefinition of what hypertension is. Um, so instead of thinking about prehypertension and then hypertension starting above 140 over 90, now we have guidelines that tell us that elevated blood pressure starts with a systolic blood pressure of 120 to 129, and stage one hypertension now defined in the 130 to 139 or 80 to 89 group, uh, and then 140 to 90 and above being stage two hypertension. So and then, yeah, and then the idea of treatment now being somewhat personalized, right? Yes. It, we're now finally getting to the point where we're actually thinking about as a person has higher risk, more aggressive therapy, completely consistent with what the evidence has told us so far, but now allowing doctors to now practice that in their actual everyday practices. I think that's right. Really robust recommendations about lifestyle for people at lower risk, and then lifestyle plus drug therapy, really combining not just that single number of the blood pressure, but importantly, considering the global risk. And then finally, the other big thing, a lower treatment target, trying to get all of our patients to less than 130 over less than 80 really exciting news. Yeah, I think most everybody is happy to see these come out. I think some people, if the only slightly negative I hear is that it's going to put a lot of challenges or pressure, pardon the pun, uh, onto the doctors and health systems to try to deliver it. But we all know it's the right thing to do, so I'm glad to see the guidelines finally coming to that. Beyond the hypertension guidelines, I think a whole emphasis on prevention has been rather remarkable at these meetings. Yeah, I think a couple of exciting follow-up studies uh, from the CANTOS trial, as you know, uh, a novel uh, canakinumab, a, a novel application of a therapy that's an anti-inflammatory to reduce atherosclerotic cardiovascular events. And I think what was really interesting here is um, really personalizing, as you pointed out, the use of such a therapy just after one dose, seeing who re reduces their inflammatory burden by measuring their CRP level and finding that only those people who had more than, than uh, the, the average reduction in their CRP were the ones who were going to get long-term benefit from the drug. And those who didn't, maybe you wouldn't use the drug for longer term. So really trying to personalize those decisions. And we saw the same thing with regards to the PCSK9 inhibitors, where on the Fourier results, again, very similar, finding high-risk populations for which the benefits were much more significant, even looking at other disease states, polyvascular disease, and looking at limb, limb salvage. So I think a lot of these meetings have been focused on this idea of personalization and precision medicine as it re relates here. A lot of findings with regards to the genetics overall, lots of information on new and big data, and how we can, again, use all this information to better practice medicine and personalize it for the individual. Any other of the trials that really excited you? Yeah, I think there were a couple areas where we saw some real progress, um, uh, at least in terms of understanding the problems, if not actually, in some cases, showing us new ways to do therapy. Uh, I thought there were a number of important trials, um, again, teasing out uh, uh, patients who we have to put on antithrombotics or antiplatelet agents, but we might also need to put them through a procedure. And I thought we got some good guidance 
on, uh, on how to do that better. Um, and then I think a very exciting session focused on quality improvement, um, in, in sometimes in international settings, and the continued challenges of we can see modest improvements in process of care. Um, translating those into actual outcomes is, is a tough nut to crack, but got to keep doing it. Yeah, no, I think that's another big message. I mean, we have all these wonderful discoveries. How do we apply them every day to uh, reach all the maximum potential we have? Um, I think a final note should go about uh, our president, uh, John Warner. He had one of the most amazing first speeches that, that I've ever heard. It was incredibly personable, and it talked about the ability of each individual to do what they can to better um, the field and to help individuals, uh, whether you be a volunteer, a scientist, or a clinician, all of those having great opportunities. He also gave his own personal story, the idea that everybody in his family or the males in his family had all suffered from early cardiac disease. We respect him so much for his work and effort as the president of the Heart Association and know that he will in part inspire us throughout the rest of his time. In closing, I'd like to thank you all for all your help through these meetings. Uh, I think it's been a wonderful session. Thank you, Don, and the rest of the committee for setting up such an amazing science experience. And we'll look forward to seeing you all at 2018 scientific sessions in Chicago. Thanks a lot.